Hey y'all, welcome to episode 19 of Relationshiping and Handling, a podcast about relationships, of course, and how to handle different aspects of those relationships. I am your host, Hunter, and today I'm kind of getting back into the regular swing of things. If y'all saw last week at all, about halfway through the week, I put out a video and a in a podcast uh, kind of um, little talking points. Um, it was supposed to only be about 10 minutes, but it ended up being about 20 minutes. Uh, talking about something completely different than what I usually do in relationships. I spoke about depression. It was something that God really had laid on my heart um, to talk about. Um, I'm not the type of person to toot my own horn, and uh, I don't do this for views or more followers or more listens or more clicks or whatever. But that that specific video audio that I put out, I just highly suggest if if you yourself or someone that you know could use hearing something like the way that God speaks to us about um, about ourselves, um, fighting depression in different ways, different things that we ourselves can do to help fight depression. I highly suggest passing it along. But this week, again, jumping back into the to the regular swing of things, I'm actually starting a new mini series. I, I really like this whole idea of doing mini series. Uh, for one, if some of y'all already know me or y'all have listened to me long enough. You know that I'm a bit long-winded, and so by doing a mini-series about one specific topic, I can cut it up into three, four, even five different episodes, and I'm able to really go into detail, into into the things that God has really placed on my heart, and really dig deep into things, and I'm not under the time crunch of, of uh, you know, diving through a whole topic in a certain amount of time. It also allows for me to edit less, which is definitely a plus. But I've done a couple of mini-series before. The most recent one I did was over the Christmas story and and what what the different characters of the Christmas story can teach us about relationships. And then I did one about how to argue um, a couple of months ago. Now, that is definitely one that... I'm not very good at at arguing. In fact, two days ago, I was in a very heated argument with Jasmine. I didn't show very much kindness. I didn't. I didn't give. Um, I didn't act out a lot of what I spoke on whenever I talked about how to argue. I did a whole lot better than I than I would have, but I still really do suck, and and it, I'm definitely a work in progress. And I bring this up because I just want to kind of get out there that I'm not doing these podcasts, I'm not doing these episodes to teach or preach. I am, I am 100% putting myself out there. I'm going through a lot of these things along with y'all, who, the listeners, the viewers. And, and I want to share what I'm learning, what God is teaching me, and, and maybe help someone else from making a mistake that I have or um, just recently have made or whatever. And so that leads me into this mini series that I'm starting up today. It's going to be about four weeks or so, and it's over, surprise, surprise, another subject that I am not very good at, um, and that is forgiveness. Now, to me, there are three main actions whenever it comes to forgiveness. There's forgiving others, of course. There's asking for forgiveness. And then there's forgiving yourself. And I'm going to be talking about this kind of in reverse order of difficulty for me. So today is about forgiving others. Now, back about eight or nine years ago, my sponsor said something to me about unforgiveness that some of y'all have probably heard. It's probably been said different ways, uh, but it really, really stuck with me. And that is unforgiveness is like drinking poison and thinking that the other person's going to die. I mean, ultimately, the only thing that uh, unforgiveness does is it hurts yourself. It hurts the one who harbors unforgiveness. 
And next week or the week after, I'm not really sure yet, but I'm going to be diving a little bit more into the truth behind that. And like all of my episodes, I have a course scripture uh, for each one of them, and this week is no different. Uh, it is found in Colossians 3.13, and Paul says to us, Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And before we dive into that, and before we dive into what it truly means to forgive others, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for allowing me the ability to do this. Thank you for the uh, platform to do this, God, and I I pray that all the glory and honor go to you, Lord, um, that whatever um, changes are are had by by myself or other people, that the glory will be given unto you, God. Uh, I pray that you will just open our hearts and ears and eyes even to to, to hear and see what you have to say to us, God. And I thank you and I love you. In Jesus' precious name I pray, amen. Now to dive deeper into what I was speaking on before and what my sponsor had said to me, uh, that brings me to saying, yes, I am a recovering addict. Um, I have been in recovery for close to 10 years now. Um, I'm a recovering sex addict. And... Uh, so I have worked the steps, the 12 steps. Um, I did it through Celebrate Recovery. Um, it's a Christ-based, uh, recovery program. Um, it's like a lot of the anonymous groups, but instead of just saying there's a higher power, we claim Jesus Christ as the higher power. He is the one true higher power that can, the only thing that can get you through, um, addictions and, and moving through recovery from those addictions. And I've talked to a lot of people who, like myself, have gone through recovery. Um, And it seems to be across the board, one of, or a couple of the steps that are the most daunting whenever you're first looking at the 12 steps are the fearless moral inventory, where you write out and you point out every single wrong that you have that you have made towards yourself and other people, um, and the making amends. I definitely did not enjoy writing out all the things that I did that hurt other people. And I definitely wasn't looking forward to, you know, making amends, asking forgiveness from other people. But all along the way, I had a sponsor there helping me and guiding me, um, kind of keeping me on track. And one of the things is that whenever you make your moral inventory, every single thing is shared with your sponsor. So I wrote out everything. I had about three or four different pages of these things, these horrible things, not so horrible things, but ways that I hurt other people. And I handed it to him one day whenever we were going through the steps and he looked at it, he read it over and he handed it back to me and said, you're not done. And I was taken aback. I said, what are you, what are you talking about? I, I, I put down everything. I've prayed on it. I, I really racked my brain on all this. Like I, I spent a long time doing this. And he said, well, you didn't write down anything that other people did to you that that was a wrong to you or hurt you. And you don't have anything in here about how that you plan on forgiving those people for hurting you. And I, I was like, what? what? Like, I'm the one that hurt everybody. Like, who cares about the things that people did to wrong me? Like, I was beating myself up over the things that I had done during my past that, that led me to this point. And I, I definitely didn't want to shift blame over to someone else. But as, as I went ahead and indulged him and started to write down these things that I, I was in my like mid 20s or so, and I started to write these things down and started to realize that there were some things that for close to two decades I had held on to and I hadn't realized it. Things things that 
10 years prior, people had done to me or, or had hurt me in one way or another, and I hadn't really dealt with it at all. Now, my sponsor told me that only asking for forgiveness was a half measure. And if you've been around uh, recovery in any shape or form, you've heard that phrase, half measures. And it's actually used in, a, in another phrase that is, that is said often, and that is, half measures avail nothing. Ultimately, what that means is you're not going to recover. You're not going to be able to work the steps if you're just half-assing it. And I think God actually tells us that. He tells us that throughout the Bible whenever it comes to forgiveness. Holding on to unforgiveness is going to hold you and myself back from being the person that God truly wants us to be. And, and, and to kind of further that point and take a look into what God has to say about unforgiveness or, or about forgiving and what it's, what it's like to be a person that God wants you to be. Let's take a, a look at a couple of scriptures. The first being Ephesians uh, 4.32, where Paul again says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ God forgave you. By forgiving, you're being kind and you're being compassionate to other people. If we go back and take a look at the core scripture for this week of Colossians 3.13, bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. I love this phrase, bear with each other and forgive. Ultimately, what he's saying is, be patient with one another. And if you forgive one another, then you're going to be patient with one another. One thing that's in common between the passage I wrote, read in, in, uh, in Ephesians and this one right here is that we are mirroring God. In Ephesians, it says, just as in Christ, God forgave you. And then in Colossians, he says, forgive as the Lord forgave you. God is calling us to be more like Christ. He's calling us to be more holy, be more sanctified, be more like God intended us to be in the first place. In, uh, in Matthew 18, 21, and 22, Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister when they sin against me, up to seven times? And Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. In other translations, it says 70 times seven times. Ultimately, what, what's being, what's being you know, uh, uh, translated here and what's, what Jesus is trying to say is forgive constantly. And that, that's what we're called to do is we're called to constantly forgive each other, forgive other people. Ultimately, no one is unforgivable. Forgiveness is really just living out the fruits of the Spirit. I mean, forgiving other people is showing love. It's showing joy, it's showing peace, showing patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. All of those fruits are going to point you towards forgiving other people. And when you forgive other people, you're showing off those fruits of the Spirit. Now, if, if for whatever reason you're listening to this and you're like, oh, I don't really care to hear from what from what the Bible says and what Jesus has to say. First of all, I don't know why you're listening because this whole podcast is based around the truths of the Bible and, and the truths that Jesus brought to us. But if, if you want to hear something secular, just take a listen to some of these studies. Forgiving other people brings upon healthier relationships, improved mental health, less anxiety, stress, and hostility, 
lower blood pressure, fewer symptoms of depression, stronger immunity, improved heart health, and improved self-esteem. And that's all from the mayoclinic.org. Now, the Mayo Clinic was definitely founded by uh, Christian founders. So if that's not secular enough for you, well then, let's take a look at what lifehack.org says. And that is, and, and, and pay attention to this, see if you find anything that sounds pretty similar. And that is that forgiving other people, it reduces stress and stress-related disorders. It can help lower depression. It protects your heart. It can strengthen relationships and it can help you reach your potential. I mean, not only is the Bible saying that forgiving other people is is right and is the is is what needs to happen and what you need to do, but secular psychology um, people in society are saying, yeah, there's a lot of of good things that come along with forgiving other people. But if none of that is enough to convince you, then let me let me leave y'all with this scripture. And it's in Matthew 6, 14 through 15. And this is what Jesus has to say. He says, For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but that is scary. A lot of people want to paint Jesus and God as this grace-filled, merciful, you know, loving God that forgives everyone. And to a certain extent, He is, right? God is love. God is full of grace and full of mercy. But He also says, Jesus says, this isn't Old Testament God. This is Jesus saying about God about our Heavenly Father, that if you do not forgive other people, then God the Father, Jesus, will not forgive you of your sins. <laughs> so do you hold on to any unforgiveness? I mean, think really hard about that. Think about that in regards to what I just read. If you forgive other people, Jesus, God, will forgive you of your sins. If you don't forgive other people, God won't forgive you. So think really hard. Do you harbor any unforgiveness towards anyone? Do you need to forgive maybe your spouse for making passive aggressive comments towards you? Maybe your siblings for not staying in touch like you wanted them to as you grew older. For your parents in the way that they treated you growing up. Do you need to forgive your friends for not having your back during a tough time? Do you need to forgive the church for being a place full of hypocrites? Do you need to forgive your neighbor for being way too noisy while you're trying to go to sleep? Do you need to forgive that stranger for cutting you off in traffic as you were running late for work? What kind of forgiveness are you withholding? And why do you think that you're withholding it? Let these questions kind of sink in. Ask those questions to yourself. Really meditate on these. And just remember that forgiveness is showing off the fruits of the Spirit. And if you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, you need to be showing off those fruits of the Spirit. And one way to do that is by forgiving. Also, forgiveness, forgiving other people, it has physical and emotional benefits. If, if, the, if showing off the fruits of the Spirit and being more like God isn't enough for you, well then, forgiveness will help you out and give you benefits in the physical realm, in the emotional realm. And, and lastly, God will not forgive you if you're not forgiving other people. Guys, this is something that is a cornerstone to Christianity. And if you call yourself a Christ follower, 
If you are a believer, then forgiveness is essential. So as we go throughout the rest of this week, let's meditate on this. Let's start to get into a habit of forgiving rather than holding grudges. Let's let's move forward and closer to forgiving right away and, and living a life that is mirroring what God wants us to be like, uh, being more like Christ. And one of the best first steps forward is to forgive. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you got something from this. Uh, I hope you really take an introspective look and and see if there's something that you need to root out whenever it comes to unforgiveness. I hope you guys come back next week, same time. I'm going to be dealing with another aspect, another action of forgiveness. If y'all have any questions, any comments, go ahead and hit me up on my social media, uh, my Instagram, uh, comment on the YouTube videos, uh, share this with other people if you feel like it, whatever. Uh, But until next time, guys, I love y'all and God bless you. Bye.